We recently paid a visit to the mission of the African Union in Washington, D.C., and I sat down with senior diplomats from Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea, and South Africa. I asked all of them about the future of the continent, and their collective message was, exciting things are happening in Africa. Keep your eyes on us. This is America and the World is brought to you by Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology sharing tomorrow. The Washington Diplomat, a world of news and perspective. The Sultanate of Oman. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, Julia Chang Block, President. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for sitting in with us. Uh, tell me a little bit about your country. Yeah, I'm Ambassador Haidar Amamadou. I'm a Ambassador of Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire. Don't say Ivory Coast. <laughs> Don't it's say Ivory Coast. It's a French-speaking country located in West Africa, in the middle of Ghana and Liberia, mm -hmm. and uh, part of uh, uh, West African Economic Zone. It's a, a very dynamic, I can say, country because uh, we are uh, in the region, we are the second economy behind Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, you know, at the big, uh, you know, if you know about chocolate, we are the first producer of cocoa beans. Mm -hmm. We produce two million tons of cocoa beans, and our neighbors are producing one million tons. Uh -huh. And uh, in terms of relationship with the U.S., we are one of the biggest exporters to the U.S. We are exporting uh, about 1.2 billion dollars in terms of uh, goods, uh, chocolate, agriculture product, uh, not and so on. It's the agriculture-based country. We call it the economic power of the regions mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it represents itself uh, almost 40% of economic power, except Nigeria. You know, that's uh, the uh, country of uh, 25 million inhabitants. And uh, we call it the herb of the region because from Cote d'Ivoire you can reach out almost uh, 100 uh, inhabitants surrounding countries. In uh, America, of course, we have the, the American dream. Yes. Is there a dream for Africa? Yes, it's a dream from Africa. Because Cote d'Ivoire example, in terms of achievement, in terms of economy, uh, is, uh, is, is, is a good sign for Africa that it's feasible. Is still reachable. The dream is reachable. We are among the fast grow, growing economy in the world. For the se for the past seven years now, we are experiencing a rate of growth of eight percent. Mm -hmm. Yes, a steady rate, continuous rate throughout Africa. Yeah. Yes, this is a tremendous. You know, for uh, seven years now, having the rate of growth of eight percent, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a tremendous. That meanwhile, it, it took us a lot of work. And it's not an oil-producing country. We are. It's the, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the economy based on agriculture. That means work. Mm -hmm. If you if you end up doing good work, how work hard you can make your way. You can reach the African dream. That I think uh, people used to call the, the miracle of Africa. It's uh -huh. not a miracle. It's the work. What, are, what, are, what, are, what do you think are some of the uh, myths and stereotypes about Africa, and some of the real hard facts? Because I don't know. They don't know. They don't know. I, I, I get a chance to have a, some discussion with a, a member of a U.S. Congress, mm -hmm. and uh, that was last year. We had a discussion about uh, the, the, the impact of China in Africa. So they were uh, asking how they can you know, make their way, how they can counter China in Africa. I say, it's quite simple. You have to be there. You have to have to know the country. You have to know this is, is, is Africa is still a young continent. My country is, has been independent for 60 years now. It's a bet, it's run by, you know, by people well educated. My president, he, he went to school here. He was a Wharton graduate, he has a PhD. Uh -huh. And that's different. And it's about all the leadership. And you have to know the market. And this uh, uh, 
uh, senator and this congressman, you know what? After our, ex our, after our speech last year, this year they went to Cote d'Ivoire, they visited Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Senator Kuhn, Senator Lindsey Graham, uh -huh. uh, Congressman Marco, and when they came back, they were very surprised. They say this is a, this is a, 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 a surprising. What, but, what surprised them? Do you the think? Surprise, the, this, the, I think the achievement of the economy. Uh huh. They were thinking Africa. Yeah, yeah Africa is the continent. So that that is the, the stereotype. Yes, the stereotype. The myth. Yeah, because they miss it. Because you have a, in Africa, it's a sixty. It's the fifty country. Fifty country. You have a one or two country in trouble. They consider all Africa is in trouble. Uh huh. What do you think is in the way of, uh, of Americans, uh, congressmen, senators, uh, people who are in the cabinet positions, not knowing about Africa? What has gotten I think in sometimes the way? It's, the, it's the matter of interest. Because I think America, they have, uh, they have, uh, they have different options. Mm -hmm. They are looking big. They are looking big. From the history of Africa, you know, I think this stereotype, you think about, okay, Africa is about hunger, it's about, uh, you know, war and so on. Uh -huh. uh, but they forget that this is it's the still young country. You know, the age of the U.S., I don't know, 200, uh, 200 300. Africa is 60, uh, 60 years. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then you have to build up the democracy, you have to build up, but we, we are going fast. I don't know, the, it's the stereotype, you want to say. Mm. Some, Sometimes, you know, it's not easy to, to uh, learning is a process, but you have to get an interest to learn something. So, uh, so, so, so when these uh, senators and Congress persons uh, went abroad, and they experience the continent for what it is, the country for what it is, came away with a whole different... Different view. Different, different view. view. Change. And we, in Cote d'Ivoire, we are organizing the uh, a Goa Forum this year. Yeah. It's going to be in, in August in Cote d'Ivoire. Tell the people what that, that little phrase means, Agora. A Goa, this is African Growth Opportunity Act. Uh -huh. This means U.S. had a good analysis, a good assessment of doing business in Africa. They say, okay, we don't, we don't, we, we, don't, we want to, we want to uh, do trade, not aid. Yeah. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, Egoa, this is in, this is a trade, uh, it's the trade act that had been enacted by the contra, the, by the Congress, saying that African products, mostly ten thousand of African products, have to be in in in, uh, in U.S. without tariffs. Without tariffs. Without tariffs. When this uh, continental uh, free trade area comes into play, and all of African, all of the African countries are one block. That's going to wake up the world, isn't it? That's going to wake up the world. Yeah. And uh, I think the, uh, also, but it doesn't contradict our partnership, our relationship with the U.S. Mm -hmm. Because the market is different. What I'm saying, me, I'm selling 40% of my cocoa beans in the U.S. Yeah. You know, U.S., I, I, even if I'm a big producer of cocoa, I'm not a big eater of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you are. It's different. It's a matter of culture. You know, we do it's a like different market. We do I like. think it can be, it can be, com it can be complementary with a, a continental trade agreement. And Africa will be, will be doing big. You know, you are, you are seeing now the Brexit in Europe. Mm -hmm. you were, Europe is, break, is, is broken down. And uh, Africa is showing the example of how to be together. And it's, it's down now. It's going to be a big deal. Mr. Ambassador, we're at the end of our time, but what a lovely uh, opportunity for us to talk. You have a big meeting coming up there in August, I yes, believe. Yes, in four, 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 the 4th to 6th of August in Abidjan. All the African country, 38 countries will be in Africa and do uh, talk business with the U.S. I am uh, plotting with the African Union Ambassador uh, to visit some African countries. Please don't forget, not Cote d'Ivoire. I hope that we can Please. visit with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. You're welcome. Ambassador, so good to meet you. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Tell me a little bit about your country. I'm from Guinea, and Guinea is in West Africa. Guinea is um, well endowed in terms of mining resources, in terms of water, because Guinea is the water tower 
of West Africa. All the big rivers of West Africa are coming from Guinea, mm -hmm. all the way down to Senegal, all the way down to Nigeria, going through Mali, Niger, Ivory Coast, and then... Uh, so Guinea is supposed to be the breadbasket of West Africa. Very important then, huh? Of course, of course. We used to be the first exporter of banana in the world uh -huh. in the 50s. Uh -huh. But we shifted from agriculture to mining. Now we have to come back to our traditional patterns. When you say mining, what kind of uh, commodities? Bauxite. Oh, okay. Guinea has the two third of world reserve in bauxite. Ooh. But so far, we are exporting raw materials. Mm -hmm. So we need to use our water to make a hydro dam to produce electricity and to process this bauxite into alumina and then into aluminum. Ah. And you know, it's very important for modern economy. Mm. When you look at Africa today, what do you see? I see mixed, a mixed picture. I see a lot of progress. The young people are vibrant. They are connected. They are people of the world. But at the same time, our economy is not producing, offering enough job for these young people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is where we need investment to provide job for these people to avoid these young people to be time bound. Mm. To yeah. stay home. To stay home and not to go to die in the Mediterranean or to, to go elsewhere. So, I, I, so uh, that's why I, I have a lot of hope for the future. Uh -huh. For the future because uh, in the next 30 years, Africa will have the youngest people in the world. Mm. Almost 40% of youth will be in Africa. But these young people could be an asset or liability mm. based on the economic growth. What are three things that you think Americans should know about the African countries? First, I think they should look at a new eyes they have to look at Africa with the eyes of the 21st century. Mm. Mm -hmm. Africa is the last frontier for economic growth for the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. When you look at growth rate, even in China, China is in transition in terms of economic growth. It went up to 13%. Mm -hmm. Today, it's around six percent. Mm -hmm. We may stabilize. This is some sort of plateau, but it may go down. While in Africa, we're going up. Uh -huh. So the U.S. should know that. And the U.S. should not look at Africa as a, a new colony for China or for Russia, mm -hmm. but as a true partner that could be very important for U.S. trade, for U.S. investment, and for your economic growth. Uh -huh. So that's a big piece. Yes. Number one. Yeah. Number two and number three. Number two, uh, I think uh, I talk about the youth. Uh, the young people in, on the continent are open. We were colonized by Europe, but more and more young people are looking to the U.S. Uh -huh. So if the U.S. is open for our people to train them mm -hmm. to provide new technologies to our young people, then there could be good advocate for the U.S. back to Africa. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So no more brain drain, huh? No, 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 no. Go on. There, there is brain drain because there is not enough opportunity mm -hmm. at home. Mm. If I am back home, I prefer to stay there, even though I may perhaps have $10,000 in the US, but back home, 5000 or less will be enough 
to get along. Yeah, the quality of life is not the same. There's no harassment and we have fresh air. <laughs> so free is democracy. Democracy is booming on the continent, although you may find here and there certain situations that may not be appropriate, but it's a learning process. And the third thing Americans should know. Yeah, I'm talking about this democracy. Uh -huh. Democracy is booming in Africa. We, we should not only look at the headlines on Sudan, on Algeria, although this headline should be read in two ways, meaning that the people of Algeria, the people of Sudan, are willing to take their destiny in their own hands. Uh -huh. This is very important. So if democracy is booming on the continent, then Africa could be a good partner. Free press, free speech, vibrant democracy. I think this is very important. Are you optimistic for the future of Africa? Of course, of course, of course. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for the education and thank you for our chat. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. Some folks might not know that at uh, an embassy, there's the ambassador and then there's the charge. Tell them a little bit about your responsibility. Um, you would not have a charge if there's an ambassador. So I am a charge because there's no ambassador at this ah. point in time. So I'm an acting ambassador. That's what an it means. An acting ambassador. That's what it means. From South Africa. From South Africa. Tell me a little bit about what's going on in South Africa nowadays that we should know about. Uh, we've just gone through free and fair elections on the 8th of May. We have inaugurated our president on the 25th of May. Mm -hmm. Our president has nominated his cabinet that will move South Africa forward. Uh -huh. And now we are waiting for President Ramaphosa to give us matching orders on the 20th of June, and that's what it's called, State of the Nation Address. Ah. So we're excited. So what do you believe will be at the top of the agenda? Knowing my president, President Cyril Ramaphosa, top of his agenda will be inclusive economic growth, for sure. Ah. What is the uh, basis of the economy in South Africa? Um, the, the president is very clear that where we are, we're very um, clear that we're not doing as well as we could in terms of our economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are having very slow economic growth at the region of 1.1%, mm -hmm. uh, but we determined to change that narrative. Uh -huh. But underneath that is job creation. Make sure that there's quality, that people are out of poverty. That's uh -huh. the basis of why we're pushing for inclusive economic growth. In um, some of the African countries, there is the uh, question of the challenges uh, of poverty, uh, as you've mentioned, uh, health, mm. education. Mm. Those, those, are, those are real, mm. that, that have to be mm. tackled. Mm. Huh? How does mm. a country uh, that is as well known as South Africa tackle those, those three areas? Uh, mm. e education, health, poverty, those mm. are, uh, jobs, mm. we're going to add another. Um, I think in terms of jobs, uh, we're very clear once we attract a lot of foreign direct investment ah. to the country, mm -hmm. it will then boost the economic growth mm -hmm. of the country. But also, we are cognizant of the fact that we need to make sure that our youth is educated. Mm. Um, the president puts a lot of emphasis. We have what we call early childhood development now that mm. he has now moved from Department of Social Development to Department of Basic Education so that it could get enough attention and we pay attention to learners while they're still young mm -hmm. and we groom them up. So there's a lot of emphasis around education. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of emphasis around skills development. Uh -huh. Anything that we do around trade and investment mm -hmm. always has an emphasis around youth, women, and skills transfer. Uh -huh. 
What, uh, what is there in South Africa, which is so well known throughout the world, uh, that would be uh, attractive uh, for a company to come in uh, from, from the United States, in particular, uh, mm. to make an investment in South Africa? Our business climate is, is very uh, attractive. We are clear of our policies. Mm -hmm. When you invest in South Africa, we're very transparent from the onset. Mm -hmm. We have what we call one-stop shop. Uh -huh. You go to DTI, you get all the help that you need to set up a company uh -huh. or measure or anything that you want to do around trade and investment. So you get help in one place instead of going from pillar to post. And once you invest in our country, we make sure that we've got different incentives. Uh -huh. And those are around making sure that you comply with our policies that are meant to redress our past imbalances. But those incentives include, once you invest in South Africa, you should have an element around skills development uh -huh. and skills transfer. And then we encourage people that if you invest in South Africa and you have those elements, we incentivize you. But it does not end there. Once you come to South Africa, we make sure that there's an aftercare. So we don't just call you and dump you in South Africa. We'll make sure that we follow you through as you are investing in the country. Uh -huh. So that's one of the things that is more attractive. Our business climate is very clear in terms of our policies. We've got a constitution that is very, very, very known in the world to be resilient. And we've got the constitutional judges that are very independent to protect investors. Um, so there's just so much um, uh, going on in the country around attracting investment into South Africa. What do you see as the, in, over the next 5, 10, 15 years happening in Africa in general? Uh, I'm sure all the ambassadors that were here spoke to you about the Africa that we want. The Africa that is prosperous, integrated, that is free of guns, mm. that's where all of us are going. And we call that Agenda 2063. We are all working towards that. 2063. Agenda AU 2063. We are all working towards that. So we see a South Africa and an Africa that is integrated, that is prosperous, and that is unified. Mm. Are all of the countries on board? Yes, they are. We would not be sitting here and talking about a continental free trade agreement that has entered into force. Yes, there may be one or three of them uh -huh. that have not yet signed, yep. but I'm positive that things will change for the better. Uh, I ask this uh, question because it comes into my mind. Once that there is a free trade area mm -hmm. and all of the countries are involved, when all of the countries are involved, uh, that's going to really wake up the world, isn't it? Huh? Uh, I have a phrase that I call walala. Wasala. It means if you're not taking Africa seriously now, you'll be left out. Why do you say that? I am saying that in, you know, when we started uh, negotiating the Continental Free Trade Agreement, there was a lot of skepticism. There was a lot of negativity. And look at where we are today. Yeah. Walala wasala indeed. We've got a number of countries already on board, a few more to join into the uh, agreement. Uh, but uh, one Africa, uh, free movement, free trade, free investment uh, within the entire country, and it's a huge, huge economy, isn't it? It's a very huge economy with a population of more than 1.2 billion people, GDP, a combined GDP of 3.3 trillion. We are going to turn the intra-Africa trade differently. We may be sitting at 17% at this time, yeah. but look up, watch out. Once we start implementing that CFTA, things are going to change for Africa country and to for country. the entire world. Country to country. It, it, it is about uh, ensuring that we expand regional value chains. Mm -hmm. It is ensuring that we, in, we industrialize, we look at our infrastructure. I could only be positive that, watch the space. Watch. Give me one thing that Americans should think about when they see Africa in the headline or one of the African countries in the headline, something that we can take with us a thought about Africa and African countries. Uh, not belaboring the point, but to say America 
Africa is on the rise. Uh, provide us with what you offer. Other countries are in Africa because they saw the value in Africa. Be clear of what you want to offer Africa. Acting Ambassador Charge, thank, thank you so much. Inspirational, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. For information about This Is America and the World, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, or our YouTube channel, This Is America TV, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology sharing tomorrow. The Washington Diplomat, a world of news and perspective. The Sultanate of Oman. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, Julia Chang Block, President. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy and the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.